Hello and welcome to everyone to this online worship service with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff, all of the people who are helping to lead worship today, we're just so glad that you are here and we welcome you. We want to especially welcome those of you who may be joining with us for the first time in online worship. It is really, we're just so excited that you're here. And we want to encourage you to use our contact form. It is pinned in the comment section. There is a place there for you, of course, to put your contact information, uh, your email address, your phone number, all of those things so that we can connect with you. There's also a place there for you to put pre prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So we want to encourage you and everyone to use that contact form today. It is the second Sunday of Easter, and we continue with our Easter celebrations at the wonderful Easter stories and Easter music. Um, as we have that worship together today, we covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That means that we are going to participate in the worship that we're all here for. So when it's time to stand up and sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, please pray. When you listen, listen intently. We encourage you to turn off other devices, other distractions, and really focus in. Maybe light a candle to help you focus so that we can fully participate in this time of worship. And then we covenant together to be a blessing. And that means that the way we are in the comment section together, the the way that we may be gathered with people in our household or wherever we're experiencing this worship today, with the people online, with our greater community, that everything we do together is a blessing for everyone that is involved and for the world in general. As we continue now in worship, I invite you to center yourself as we enjoy this time of music with our Wesley Handbell Choir. <laughs> Hello, we are the Rao family. I'm Ashley. And I'm Barry. Who are I'm you? Lucy. This is Wendy, and this is Penny. Please join us in the call to worship and shout Alleluia with us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it, because. Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Alleluia. Please join us as we sing, Up from the Grave He Arose. Oh, 
I'm Sydney Young. I've been a member at Douglas Avenue for over 46 years, and I'm, I'm also a member of the Zephyr Sunday School class. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray our opening prayer. Loving God, you know us so very well. You know our doubts and our questions, and you love us enough to welcome those and all of who we are. You know our fighting and divisions, and you love us enough to invite us into forgiveness of one another and ourselves. Thank you for loving us, for giving us, and for inviting us on the journey of love with Jesus and one another. Help us to embrace this journey, that we may walk in the light and follow the risen Christ everywhere. Through your gracious love, we pray. Amen. Receive this assurance. Beloveds, remember that God is faithful in love and grace, wanting to receive our confessions and prayers, giving us light hearts and cleansing for our souls. Rejoice. We are loved, forgiven, and surrounded by grace. I invite you now to share that same love, forgiveness, and peace with people who may be gathered with you, worshiping right now, with those who are online, with me, with uh, these folks in our DAUMC family who are about to lead us in sharing the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. One, two, three. Peace be with you. And also with you. Good morning. I'm Janet Schmidt, the organist at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Hi, I'm Emma Crawford. Um, I was part of the youth for a while and also attended Dov Douglas Avenue for a number of years. And my name is Sarah Button and I am a member of the Finance Committee and also the Treasure Treasurer for United Methodist Women. Peace, Peace be, be with you. you. And also with you, I'm Cindy Hammer. Peace be with you. Yay, it's time for Small Talk. Small Talk is for all of our kids and kids at heart here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. So I want to encourage all of our kids who are gathering with us in worship, just get in really close to your device, to your screen. Our Small Talk is led by Miss Laurie, who's our Director of Children and Youth Ministries and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come in close right now for Small Talk. Hello everyone, it is Miss Lori and Laud the Lamb and his wonderful assistant Cohen is back with us today. So, you know what? I have something that I bet you are not gonna believe. Yeah. These are regular eggs. We have a lot of them since Easter, right? And I bet you that I can not break this egg by squeezing it. Do you believe me? You sure you believe that? Wow, you have a lot of faith, Lon. So, here we go. Trying really, 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 really hard. Really hard, not breaking, not breaking. Still not breaking. Wow. 
You know, I bet a lot of you out there doubted that I could do that, which reminds me of the story of doubting Thomas. Right, Lod? Stay awake, buddy. Okay. Doubting Thomas did not believe that Jesus had risen. He said, I've got to see him. I've got to see his hands, his feet. I have to see all of it to know. And that's exactly what happened. He didn't have faith that he had actually risen. We have to have faith. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking that maybe this isn't a real egg and I was just playing a prank, but it's a real egg. Should I prove it, Lod? Should I? Oh, Lod's assistant is gonna try. He said he believed me, but I'm thinking now that he's not believing me. Yeah. Is it working? Is it working? Okay, shall we prove to him that they are real eggs? Mm-hmm. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. They break that easy. Now, before you go and try this at home, everyone, please ask your mom and dad. <laughs> All right, have a great day. Have faith, don't doubt. <laughs> please join us in singing, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Juliet. Our reading from the Bible is John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. We pick up the story from that very first Easter. Mary Magdalene had seen, touched, and talked with the risen Jesus Christ. She then goes and announces to Jesus' disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she tells them everything that Jesus had said to her. Now this is what happens next. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them once again and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, 
and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. Amen. Happy Easter, everyone. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. We have so much to celebrate today, and it is good to be together in online worship to share our Easter joy, to remember and give thanks for God's love in Jesus Christ, and have time to reflect on all of the things that we can celebrate, large and small. So I kind of think it's a little bit of a shock, a little bit of a like, wait, what? To have this story from the Bible in the midst of our Easter celebrations. But we hear in our reading from the Bible that Juliet and Gabe shared with us about what Jesus' disciples are doing. It's the evening of that first Easter, and they're huddled together, locked in a small room. They are definitely not celebrating Jesus being alive. And then Jesus comes to them. He stands among them on their side of the locked door. He says, peace be with you. I send you. And he breathes the Holy Spirit onto them. Can you imagine the wonder, the awe, receiving Jesus in the flesh and receiving the blessing of the Holy Spirit? Amazing. So a week after that experience, we find them locked behind that same door, huddled together in that same small room, still fearful, though Thomas is with them this time. And he finally gets to see Jesus when Jesus comes to them again. It makes me want to shout, come on guys, let's celebrate. It's Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit. Let's do this thing. But before I come down too heavy on the disciples, we do need to consider ourselves, right? We can be just like the disciples were then, can't we? There are too many times we hide in our fear and don't do anything with receiving the power of the Holy Spirit that Jesus has given us. There are too many times when we don't believe the goodness we are experiencing and push away God's blessings and love. There are definitely times when we should be celebrating and we're just not. I can think of two big reasons why the disciples are not celebrating, and I think they are things that we understand really well, too. One is that they're scared. Fear keeps us from celebrating. Because fear drives us to focus only on what is wrong or what is the worst part of our lives, what we think we lack, or to focus on the unknown or some hyped up scary other who is out to get us. That's why television news is so horrible to watch. It's written to promote fear in people, to play it up. It's designed to maximize fear, to take hold of us so we'll continue to watch through the commercials and then on to the next fear-mongering story. On the other hand, celebration, healthy celebration, focuses on the positive. It's rooted in joy and hopefulness and usually in something larger than ourselves. Celebration connects us one with another in whatever way it is that we can celebrate. Celebration connects us with the goodness of God's never-failing love and the saving grace of Jesus. Whether we're celebrating together online, like in this worship service today, or celebrating on the phone with someone, or in a Zoom call together, or if we're able to carefully and healthily celebrate in person, celebration of the small things and of the big things, it connects us together. Celebration beats back the spiritual forces of wickedness that seek to make us feel we are all alone, all by ourselves, separated, and maybe even failures. I think one of the most helpful spiritual practices during the COVID pandemic has been healthy celebrating. For many of us, our typical ways of celebrating have been interrupted, and rightly so. 
But it's amazing to see the creativity people have drawn on to celebrate, to find ways to celebrate, such as Zoom parties, or a simple phone call, or a happy dance in your living room, a walk in the park, or a bike ride down the street. Those drive-by personalized parades, the resurgence of handwritten notes or letters, sending cards to people and showering them with cards. And those tiny, small celebrations of daily check-ins with loved ones. You know, sharing things you're happy about, grateful for, what's gone right. The resurgence of using a journal of thanksgiving, that practice that people have picked up again. Daily writing down what they're thankful for and celebrating it with God, with the Holy Spirit, with just themselves. Those are wonderful. But let's face it, fear can be a powerful virus against joy, gratitude, and celebration. And so just the opposite, the habit of celebration immunizes us against fear. When we choose to be grateful and celebrate that on our own or with others, it drives out fear. It doesn't lead us to reckless bravado, where we throw caution to the wind and act in ways that put the health and safety of our loved ones and our community at risk. But the habits of celebration, even in the face of risk, keep us from being captivated and overwhelmed by our fears of that risk so that we can act carefully and joyfully and celebrate. The second big reason why I think the disciples aren't celebrating in our Bible passage that we can really identify with is this. They don't believe. Mary Magdalene has told them that everything has changed. She has given her powerful testimony of meeting Jesus, the risen Christ. Jesus is alive. There's nothing more to be afraid of. Death no longer has hold of the world or on them, no matter what comes their way. The greatest victory is theirs through Jesus Christ. They should be celebrating, wondering, anticipating what will be next and what is their next step in their new life of faith and following Jesus Christ in this new way. But they're not. They don't believe. It's not sinking in or they're not allowing it to to sink in. No matter the testimony they've heard, what they themselves have seen and witnessed, they just don't believe. It's just not getting in them. I think we can get that. We too often don't believe what God is doing in our lives. It can be really hard to accept the good stuff, to claim the goodness and blessings, to be thankful and celebrate what God has done, is doing, and will do. Why? Well, we can just become so accustomed to living in the stance of fear and consuming fear that it makes it very hard to believe in goodness. When's the other shoe going to drop? Just wait. Something awful will happen. And you know, if that's the case, then really there was nothing good to believe in in the first place. You know the voices that speak like this, both within you and those that are, that are outside. And goodness can just become too hard to believe. The wild, incomprehensible good news of resurrection can sometimes seem so overwhelming that it feels easier to just keep living like we're trapped in the tomb. But here's the good news of resurrection. There is no force of evil, pain, misery, or sadness that God's love and grace cannot banish from the world, from your life, or from your heart. There is no shame, regret, mistake, brokenness that God cannot heal and repair. There is no wickedness, evil, sin, vice, or system of oppression that God's justice and healing will not overcome. This is crazy, sometimes terrifying, sometimes it's hard to believe, and amazing. And it should cause each of us to live differently, to see our lives, families, communities, and world differently. 
that change in life, letting go of our regret and shame, letting go of our anger and hate, letting go of our fear and disbelief should cause such a profound change in our lives that it will turn everything upside down. And sometimes that change in itself can be scary and just too much to believe. Sometimes it's easier to cling to the devil you know than the resurrected Jesus that maybe you don't. And it's not just the disciples who sometimes allow their disbelief from keeping them from celebrating. In fact, I think this may be one of the greatest struggles of Christians throughout the ages and still today. We are a resurrection people, but it's so tempting to keep living in the tomb. That's why celebrating is a spiritual practice not just something we do when we feel like it. That's why celebrating is a spiritual practice, not just wild partying that may feel good in the moment but can definitely lead to shame and regret the next day. That's why celebrating is a spiritual practice that puts us in touch with the mystery, love, and healing of God. Our practice of celebration helps remind us of good news. Our practice of celebration beats back the spiritual forces of wickedness. Our practice of celebration expands the confines of our vision so that we can see and believe the joy of resurrection life. Our practice of celebration is the aerobic exercise that strengthens the heart of our faith and belief and ability to be out living good news in our world. So, as we continue the celebration of Easter, we are now in a time of celebration. Don't, don't uh, not believe this. We are in a time that the Christian church calls the great 50 days of Easter. That takes us all the way to our Pentecost celebration. So during this great 50 days of Easter, I invite you, I challenge you, I encourage you to celebrate Celebrate something every day if you can. Raise your cup of morning coffee and a toast to something good that has happened. The coming of spring, hey, that's a great way to begin that toast in the morning. Write down a celebration in your gratitude journal. Call a friend and tell them about something good that has happened, anything. It doesn't need to be big. Share a celebration right now in the comment section. Celebrate with us. Post a celebration on your Facebook page every day and fill the interwebs with good news. As we continue to celebrate Easter, let's transform these next handful of weeks into an ongoing celebration of God's love and goodness and resurrection life. That resurrection life for us, for everybody, and for the entire world. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in You Are My King.
I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm the lay leader at Douglas Avenue Methodist Church. I'd like for you to join me in prayer today. Dear God, as we gather together, we thank you for all the blessings we have received. On this second Sunday of Easter, the throngs have mostly disappeared. The flowers have been taken home or given to friends, and the special joyous music of the Easter season may not be heard again until Christmas. What remains is your love for us, as there is no end to your forgiveness and grace. The love we know of Christ surpasses all understanding. We ask you to be with our global church, our local community, and especially with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We are thankful for our pastors, our church ministries, and for our congregation and friends. We are joyful to be able to begin to gather together again. Keep us safe and well. For those facing challenges, we ask that you provide healing, guidance, and strength. As we continue to celebrate your name, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the ways that we celebrate and express our gratitude is through our giving. We are so grateful for your financial giving that supports the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your financial gifts make it possible for us to do ministry in so many different ways, online and in person, with small groups, with youth group, with uh, ways that we are in service to our community. Thank you for all of your financial gifts. You can continue to give to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church using our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned in the comment section and it's accessible through our webpage as well. You can set up automatic giving with your financial institution or with ours. Uh, just call the church office if you need some help with that, or you can send in your checks to our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church office. Thank you so much for the generosity of your hearts that overflows in this kind of financial giving. We do have an opportunity to connect our faith uh, into the actions and service of our lives, and we want to be able to share those opportunities with you. A great way that we can do that is, of course, with your email address. So please fill out that contact form. Make sure to put your email address there so that we can send you our e-newsletter. It has all of the details and all of the opportunities to connect and grow in faith and to serve. So please use that contact form today. And then I just want to lift up a couple of opportunities to connect your faith into that kind of service. This Saturday, April 17th, is going to be our fifth year anniversary of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the social enterprise that has its home here with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church that serves women escaping lives of abuse, poverty, neglect, um, addiction and all those kinds of things. It's a wonderful program and it's been going for five years. So we're celebrating that on Saturday, April 17th, as well as a celebration of graduates of the program and a parking lot sale. All of that is going on from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're starting off at 10 a.m. with a parade of celebrations. So gather, we're going to be gathering all around the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church facility and cheering on the graduates and wouldn't it be lovely. And then we'll continue with a parking lot party in the back of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, as well as a parking lot sale with beautiful furniture that are produced by the women of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, as well as household goods, clothing, all kinds of wonderful things. So join us on Saturday, April 17th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Our next Community Garden Work Day is coming up on Saturday, April 24th from 9 a.m. to noon. Come meet the neighbors, fellow gardeners, help with the continued cleanup and spreading of mulch in our community garden. Don't forget to wear your face covering, of course, bring work 
work gloves and any gardening tools that you might have. And then our next opportunity for vital conversations on race is coming up on Monday, April 26th. On your own, watch part one of the documentary, The Black Church, that's available on PBS. And then we'll participate in small group discussion, learning and prayer with vital conversations. That again is on Monday, April 26th at 7 p.m. And we'll need you to register for that in advance. And of course, the links for that are in our e-news. So do use that contact form and sign up for the e-news. Thank you for your generosity and join with us in these ways to share and grow in your faith. Join us in singing Love Divine, All Love Excelling. Thank you so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It has been a joy and a celebration of our hearts to have you join with us, and we pray that this has been a celebratory experience for you, a meaningful experience for you, a powerful experience for you, that you will join with us again very soon for online worship or join with us in person at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for 815 Communion in the Sanctuary or 11 o'clock patio worship outside at the DA. UMC facility. Again, I encourage you to use that contact form so that we can encourage you in your faith and your growth and can get you all of that information about ways to connect. And remember that there is a place there for, for you to put your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love you. We want to be in prayer with you. So please use that contact form. And now as you go into your day, go celebrating the love of God that knows no end and that is with you every day. Go celebrating Jesus Christ who walks with you, who loves you, who saves you every day. And go celebrating the Holy Spirit who empowers you every day. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.